Episode 89, Snowmen. The edges of the hole in the ice started to freeze up, and the water surface got increasingly smaller. The area quickly shrunk in size by a lot. Blair grabbed Roger's arm and shook it. How did you do that? Quickly tell me. Roger smiled, his golden hair revealing a brilliant glow under the sunlight causing him to give off the scent of sunlight. I only discovered this a few days ago. When I washed up before we mated, I noticed that fish were jumping upward. I was in a hurry to mate back then and didn't have the time to catch them. When Blair kept on hearing Roger mentioning the word mate, her face flushed up. You weren't the one who did it? Blair threw a glance at the water surface and saw that the fish kept on trying to break through from the surface, their mouths gaping as if trying very hard to take in oxygen. So they were oxygen deprived? She thought that it was due to a similar kind of mental power like the one from the ape tribe. Even if fish kept on jumping up, the water surface still froze up relentlessly. The piping hot fish let out a fragrance that permeated the cold air, adding a hint of warmth to the horrible weather. The pot was filled to the brim with fish, and the boiling water would overflow if it got just the slightest bit more intense. Many fish reproduced in the cold season, and thus this pot of fish all had fat stomachs. Blair picked up a fish with a big stomach and said in surprise, there's fish row. Roger made a hmm sound and looked at the fish row curiously. You like to eat them? I love to eat fish eggs the most. Blair picked up a small chunk of fish row and put them in her mouth, then chewed on them. Her eyes squinted slightly and she said in satisfaction, it's more delicious than I expected. Have a taste. Blair then took a slightly larger chunk of fish row, sending it to Roger's mouth. Roger couldn't bear to eat them. He held on to Blair's hand, sending the fish row back to her mouth. You eat. No matter how good something tastes, there's no meaning in eating it alone. She glared at him. She couldn't beat Roger in strength and could only eat the mouthful of fish row first. She then said to Rex, get your bowl and eat up. You like to eat fish too, right? Tigers and leopards were both animals from the cat family. Given how even Roger liked to eat fish, Rex should like them too. Rex's eyes had been staring for a long time, his mouth watering for a while. He had never eaten fish before, but had a crazy yearning for the fragrance coming from the pot. It was instinctive, like how moths would fly toward the fire. Rex clenched at the firewood in his hand tightly, forcibly restraining his craving. However, his deep voice still emitted a clear desire. Can I? Of course you can. Blair turned and took two sets of bowls, handing one to Rex. She suddenly realized that she had never invited Rex to share the food that was meant solely for her. It was no wonder Rex was being so restricted. Rex's eyes gleamed, and he was about to take the bowl when Blair drew her hand back. The glow in his eyes rapidly turned dim and he tried to hide it as he added more firewood into the flame. Blair put three fish into the bowl and only handed it to Rex again when it was so full that she wasn't able to add any more. There, don't stand on ceremony. There's a lot of fish, we have to finish all of it. I can finish them, Roger said in an eccentric tone, but without much confidence. It was because females were the center of a family and even food would be distributed by them. Rex held on to the piping hot stone bowl. However, the enticing scent seemed to become non-existential and all of his senses were starting to become vague. His eyes could only see the beautiful smiling face of the female in front of him. His ears could only hear her gentle and pleasant voice. And as he breathed, he could only smell her comforting scent. Rex? Blair shook the fork in front of him and he suddenly woke up, quickly reaching out to grab it. Roger got jealous and squeezed between the two of them, pushing Blair to the side. Quickly eat the fish. Blair abruptly realized that the atmosphere was weird. 
Roger was her mate, and it seemed a little too much that she had acted so intimately with another male in front of her own mate. However, Rex was her guardian beast and had helped her so much without asking for any returns. <sighs> her mind was in such a mess. All right, Blair said in a soft voice, lowering her head and digging in. Roger poked open a fish's stomach, realizing that there was fish roe in it. He dug the entire chunk out and put them in Blair's bowl. For you. Blair felt warm inside. She smiled and said, thank you. Roger's tail on the ground started swinging crazily. This sent up dust. Thus, he quickly stopped it. Rex, too, stuffed the fish row into his mouth. Roger found more fish row in his fish and placed them into Blair's bowl once again. Blair said, don't give me any more. I still haven't finished my bowl. Then give me the fish. As Roger said that, he took away a fish that Blair had yet to finish. He then went on to take a second one. Blair quickly covered her bowl. Whenever he managed to find fish row, he would dig them out and give them to Blair at the very first instant. It was only when she was full that he finished her leftovers. In the end, the pot of fish was finished with Roger and Rex fighting for the food, not leaving even a single drop of soup behind. Blair gradually got used to the harsh colds in this world. Even though the weather was considered clear today, Blair found herself a little unable to sit still. She wrapped herself up tightly and started to build a snowman by the door. The snow that hadn't been stepped on was all clean and pure white. Blair took off her animal skin gloves, scooped up a pile of snow, and rolled it up into a ball. Roger and Rex were cleaning up the holes around the bird's shelter. This trap had already been exposed, so it would be useless to restore it. Blair told them to build a circle of logs around the place, specially used to coop up the short-winged birds. The soil that had been dug up previously was piled under the roof and could be used to bury the logs. Seeing that Blair was playing with snow, Roger stopped his work and walked toward her. He wrapped his hands around her waist and hugged her from the back. Why did you come out? Don't fall sick from the cold. Blair tried to pry off Roger's hands, but failed. So she just dragged him along as she bent over to dig up more snow. I won't. I'm not cold. However, Roger was too heavy, and no matter how Blair tried, her hands couldn't reach the ground. With Roger on her back, it felt as if she was a cow plowing the ground. Hey, I'm really not cold. Blair gave up and hung on Roger's arms. Roger took a look at Blair's hands and saw that they had turned red from the cold. His heart ached as he held on to them, using his big palms to wrap around her small, ice-cold hands. Your hands are so cold, how can you not be cold? I'm really not cold. Blair wasn't lying. The rolled snowball seemed to be releasing a tremendous amount of heat, and it was a little too hot to hold. Of course, her temperature was always considered cold when compared to Roger. Seeing that she really wanted to play, Roger couldn't bear to stop her. He said, then let me help you. What shape do you want to make them into? Roll it into a big ball first for the head, Blair immediately said. Taking the chance when Roger had let down his guard, she slipped out from his arms and pounced into the snow once again, starting to dig up snow. Roger's long arms scooped up the snow, gathering a large amount of it. It didn't take him long to roll it up into a big snowball. Rex was hard at work burying the wooden pillars. Blair felt bad seeing that he was doing the hard work by himself. She grabbed a bunch of snow, rolled it up tightly, and sent it smashing toward him. The snowball cut across the air, slowly flying toward Rex. The aim looked pretty good. Rex bent his fingers and was about to hit the unidentified object away with the back of his hand. He looked up and saw the smiling Blair, and his hand immediately paused. With a bang, the snowball smashed at Rex's muscular chest, leaving a snow-white circle on his copper-colored skin. Blair laughed out loud and said, Why didn't you dodge? Did that hurt you? Rex looked at Blair and shook his head. 
Come over and play. Help me build a snowman. Blair beckoned to him and said, Roger immediately felt displeased. He carried the snow ball with sharp edges and walked up to her. It's done. Uh, Blair took the chunk of snow and squatted down to work on it. Rex had a quiet character by nature, but he still walked over, asking in a solemn voice, What do you want me to do? Roger gritted his teeth together, releasing squeaking sounds. Blair said, You can make a ball first as well. We'll each make one snowman and then make one for Stephen. Oh, right, the eggs must be included as well. All right. Rex lowered his head and started to dig at the snow, a hint of smile seeming to appear on his lips. Roger got up close to her, saying in a soft voice, I'll help you. Okay. The three of them had fun, and time passed by unknowingly. At noon, a row of snowmen stood by the stone house. Blair ran back into the house and took out four animal skins, putting on a coat on each snowman. She then used pieces of coal that hadn't been burned up completely to decorate the snowmen's faces. These snowmen might not look nice on a close look, but they looked pretty decent from afar. Quite a number of beastmen crowded around in the distance to look at them. A few females even braved the cold to come and have a look. Roger felt a little embarrassed when he saw his snowman covered up with animal skin the way a female would. He took off the animal skin and tied it to the snowman's waist. However, the snowman's body was so fat and big that it was impossible to wrap around it with a single piece of animal skin. He could only cover up to half a circle at the bottom. Seeing that, Rex also quietly took off the clothes from his snowman, wrapping it at the bottom. Only Stephen, who was in his semi-snake form with a big long tail behind him, had his body covered up by the animal skin coat. Both Roger and Rex had an unspoken agreement to not do anything to it. At the very end, Blair took out a basket and picked up the many smooth and sturdy snow eggs, placing them into the basket. She then placed the basket next to Stephen's snowman, it's a pity that I'm not skillful enough. Otherwise, I can make them look how they would when breaking out from their shells. I really want to see the eggs hatching. Roger fell silent for a moment before saying, I'll go tell Stephen later to call you when they are almost hatching. Rex was perplexed. Since Stephen was hatching eggs in the mountain, even if Roger was able to inform him, how would Stephen be able to inform Blair when the baby snakes were breaking out from their shells?